Welcome to Writing Black Joy Season 3. I'm Sophia Robinson and I'm a story listener, a writing coach, an editor, as well as the producer of Writing Black Joy, a virtual space that celebrates, centers, and promotes the voices of black writers and storytellers with joyful and uplifting stories. Here, you'll find conversations with some of my favorite black writers and storytellers, learn more about their projects and the joy they're bringing into the world, hear more about their creative processes and find inspiration for your own creative ventures, as well as tips and strategies for writing poetry, blogs, creative nonfiction, fiction, plays, and so much more from all types of writers, as well as a sneak peek into the writing life. You could even find your next favorite writer, book, poem, play, or blog. And if you're a black writer who is looking for a coach or an editor to help you bring your joyful story into the world, then click on my website below to find out how to work with me. In the meantime, let's go to today's guest. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Writing Black Joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. And just a reminder to hit subscribe to this podcast and also to share it with a friend if you think that they will like it. Now, let's talk about today's guest. Today, I have with me Sorabel Martinez, and let me tell you, she is a powerhouse. Her personality is so infectious, and we had an amazing conversation about all the things around her book, Unbreakable. So let me just tell you a little bit about her. Sorry, Belle Martinez is a licensed clinical psychotherapist and is the CEO of SMPS Psychotherapy and Counseling Services. She's also a business coach, a consultant, public speaker, adjunct professor of psychology at Post University, a doctor of social work candidate at the Walden University, and the founder of JC's Precious Mind Foundation. Sorry, Belle has faced her chair of challenges as a Dominican American immigrant from navigating school in her second language, recovering from religious trauma, losing a child, facing multiple brain aneurysms, and all of the usual heartbreaks that women face. In Unbreakable, Soribel guides you to reconnect with your creator, figure out exactly what you want, and then take massive inspired action towards your goals. So you can see this woman is amazing, and we had such a fun conversation. Sorry, Belle and I discuss the importance of a marketing plan. We talk ideas around legacy and the dreams that we have that we may not see come to fruition in her lifetime. And she really has some incredible wisdom around this. We talk about how a diagnosis shifted her life, her journey with English as a second language and how she came to write her first book in English, her writing process and how she leaned into support during writing and publishing her book how she uses social media while writing and publishing, acknowledging the experiences in your life and working through those feelings as you move into joy and becoming unbreakable, including others in your story, being prepared for speaking our stories out loud during launching, especially when we are more comfortable with writing than we are speaking, her foundation that supports mothers with children with special needs in the Dominican Republic, the pillars of business success that she includes in her book, Unbreakable, details of her next book, and believe it or not, so much more. So I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I did. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to Writing Black Joy. I've got Thurivel Martinez with me, uh, and I'm looking forward to our conversation about her book and about her journey and everything. It's going to be amazing. Thanks for joining me today, I should say. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Now, you are in the middle of the launch of your book, Unbreakable, I believe. So you got a t-shirt. You're going to show us the book cover in a minute. Listen, I love, I love this. I love this. Um, I... (laughs) Of course, there you go. In the background, it's everywhere. everywhere. And and like anybody who's watching this, who's like a writer, writing a book or launching a book, like take several pages of Sorry Bell's book because she like, she's everywhere. She's got the social media down pat, but I just, we were just talking before I hit record about, you know, just that, that those feelings that you get when you like hold the copy of the book in your hand. But I think, yeah. It feels so good. It feels like, oh my God, it's the reality now. 
it is. But the reality is that you also want to get it into other people's hands. And I don't think I understood that enough when I wrote and self-published my first book. Like I was all about the writing, the writing, the writing, the writing. Yes, yes. When I got to launching, I was like, hmm, launching? Yes. We need to have a whole process. We need to have a whole um you know, marketing plan. We need to have all the things in place because the truth is, um, I think honestly that the first person we write in this book for is ourselves. Mm -hmm. I went through another journey of change and transformation and grief and all of that when I was writing the book, but we cannot keep that secret. We cannot keep this book for ourselves. We cannot keep these strategies, these tools. We cannot keep these stories to ourselves. So in order for us to put it in other people's hands, we have to have a very well um, plan, a marketing plan, so we can put at the hands of others. And that includes, you know, social media, um, the media, the media media, you know, being on radio and TV, which is all that stuff I'm working on, sending my press release. Um, and as you can saw, I was uh, nominated and granted the uh, um, Badass Woman of the Week right here in Connecticut. And also I was published by the Hartford Current uh, newspaper. So we want to do those things because we want people to hear the story. We want Absolutely. to get to others, as many people as possible. Mm, and I totally agree with that. And we're going to we're going to jump into that a bit later. Um, but before, yes. before all of that, tell us a little bit about your own journey to writing this book. Like, why did you write it? I obviously I know a bit more about you than the audience. So <laughs> they're about to learn, learn a bit about you. But what made you write it? What made you decide to write it? Do you even identify as yourself as a writer or is it just that you felt you had this message and you were like this is the way I want to share it so I'm curious about all the things so yeah tell me all about it so here's the truth I decided to be an author and write a book and multiple books when I was seven years old yes that's the truth I didn't know what were going to be the stories. I didn't know what was going to be the journey and the path that I was going to take to writing Unbreakable. Um, Unbreakable, uh, I've been seasoning it for a few years now that I wanted to write this book, but I needed to be ready. I needed to be ready emotionally because I knew that I needed to go to my own set of healing again because some of those things have I healed. But when you are deepened, like when you go back to those stories, stories and you are remembering those situations, um, you go through a, gr a process of grief and you go a process mm -hmm. of feeling hurt again. And I had to do my own healing process all over again. So I decided to write this book and many other books a um, long time ago. I am writing my second book right after I finished writing uh, Unbreakable. I started writing the, the business book for mental health and healthcare professionals who are in private practice. And then after that, mm -hmm. I'm going to write the money book and then after that I'm going to write the uh, leadership book right okay so I have I'm an author I think I'm a writer I have a lot of stories to tell personally and from my clients so I am a licensed clinical psychotherapist oh. in the state of Connecticut I am the CEO of SM psychotherapy and counseling services and that's a group practice that help women and their families th thrive so of course, as a therapist, I hear stories all the time. Mm -hmm. Stories as a coach, I hear stories all the time of people, you know, overcoming adversity, dealing with mental illness, emotional problems. So I have plenty of stories to tell and then teach the tools and the strategy that will get someone from where they are to where they want to be. I love that. And um I'm also a healthcare professional. I've worked in private practice. I'm ready for that book. So when I can start <laughs> I in it, me. We are in chapter know. four. I'm in chapter four right now. Yay. Uh, yes. And we're going to talk a little bit about that because I love, I love, I, I told you earlier that I, there's a book that I'm working on and it is really a book about well-being for dental professionals because I'm a dentist. I have been for mm -hmm. like 20 plus years. <laughs> so, and that, that is, that is, like it's a again, it's a book that I I've been, I was thinking about for years while I was in practice and putting things into practice for myself. So I yeah. love that idea of writing books for like your fellow professionals, but you've also obviously got so many strategies to teach 
like just people who are navigating life <laughs> and wanting some tools. So I feel like you've got a lot of, a lot of, as you said, you've got a lot of stories to tell. You've got a lot of audiences to reach. So um, I'm totally looking forward to that next book of yours. So that's yes. good. It's coming. It's cooking. It's in the oven. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. So um, you are aware that this podcast is called Writing Black Joy. And I, uh, I interview different writers, different storytellers, people who are getting their messages out through a variety of medium, um, particularly Black writers who are there to influence, as you said, other healthcare professionals, maybe yes. other people, whoever they're out there to, to influence. Why did you say yes to the podcast? What made you interested in the topic? Like what brought you to, to my audience? Well, as a Black woman, right, um, I was born to Dominican Republic. I am a Black uh, Dom Dominican. And um, for me, um, of course, the call is to empower others. My call is to help others heal, to help others overcome, to help others get, get where they want to be, to get others to build their queendom legacy, right? So it's worth it for us to just pass it on to the next generation, celebrating the women before us that went through so much and slavery and suffering and and, and things that they did so you and I can be here. So you, the audience, and I can be here. So it's an honor for them. We are fulfilling their dreams. They dreamed about being able to fulfill this. And of course, they were not able to do that. We are doing that for them. Mm. And that is so important to me as a Black woman, as a Black mother, as a mother of a Black man that is going to need this legacy. He's going to need the full steps. He's going to need the strategy. He's going to need his mother to overcome all the things so he can overcome at the next level. Totally. So, of course, I want to come and tell my, 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 my story about my book, how I did this book, how it all came about, and what can I help you, the audience, really understand that everything that you have is already prepared for you to do the things that you desire. So hmm. if you want to write a book, go write the book because God has provided you all the tools and the strategies and ability and capability and all your potential is inside of you to get it done. Mm -hmm. You just need to make a decision. And I I'm here that. to show you that's possible. I'm here to show you and give you some tips, strategies, and everything so you can use that blueprint and go do it. Do the go thing do for it. yourself. And one of the things you talked about I, is, the, is a piece that I wrote recently. Um, I'm going to release it shortly. Because um, I've been thinking a lot about this idea of legacy, right? You talked about your son. Um, I've got niece, nephew, um, and this idea of legacy, like recently I've been thinking about the idea of having a dream and a vision for the world that may not come to fruition in your lifetime, right? And so when you talked a bit about like the ancestors and the, those who came before us having the dream or us and not seeing it come to fruition, and I've just been thinking about like, the idea of what what keeps you going, even if you there's a possibility that that dream is not going to come to fruition in your lifetime. I'm sorry, I got to go on tangent because like I literally like I'm editing that. It's just a blog post that I'm work I've been working on, and you know I love that you mentioned it because I think sometimes sometimes those are the hardest. Those dreams can be hard to fight for if you <laughs> feel like you have this enormous vision. And yes. it, you may not see the end of it. You may not see it come to life, right? So, um, sorry, I'm just throwing that out there because because <laughs> I'm reading about it. What are your thoughts on that? Do you like? Do you ever feel like that? Like you have such a big vision, and like you know, mm -hmm. like how do you keep yourself motivated if you knowing that it's such a big vision? Yeah, I think that um, our vision was given to us before we were even born. We were selected to fulfill a calling. I do think that the creator knew that it would take probably several generations for the full fullness, right, of the vision, right, to come into pass, right? Because he didn't create us just for this time. He created us for multiple times. And in order for the multiple times to get fulfilled, other people have to 
take that vision and expand it in mm. within their own purpose and their own vision. Does that make sense? It so does. my son will take part of what I'm doing, if not all, depends on what his own purpose is, and he will extend that to his generation. And mm. my nieces and my nephews who are ready to also do this work. Now, here is the thing for me is that if we do the work now, to transform, to change, to do what we need to do, to become unbreakable, we can actually extend that grace to them. Because if we don't, then what we're going to do is we're going to pass on just the curse uh, generation to generation, mm-hmm. the trauma right. from generation to generation, the limitations, lim- limiting mindsets, and all the things that have um that we need to transform in order for us to get to the next level mm-hmm. so i really don't want my full vision of who i am as sorry about martinez to be fulfilled in this in this in this in this season wow. of course not i would be so selfish to think that such a vision can get fulfilled now as my um uh, Luther King, right? Ask Mr. Dr. King if he if his vision is still not being fulfilled by it's all true. of us. It's true. Right? Yeah. Um, so it would have been a waste if um his vision would have just been fulfilled by him and all that he did, so we can be here, right? Mm. So for me, I want that extension to continue to be. Mm. And it begins here with this with Unbreakable and some of the stories um that I share there. Um, had threatened that vision to come into fruition. Um, in 2010, in 2009, I was diagnosed with two brain aneurysms. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that threatened my vision. And when I was, uh, when I received a phone call from my doctor, my life m- made a shift. I was getting ready to go to Panama with my son and some friends. Life was good. I was in my comfort, I was living comfortable. I was living my life. I was still breastfeeding my son. I was at the miracle. He's my miracle baby. The only child that I have after about eight, nine losses, right? So can you imagine, right? Me being a mother after so many losses. Mm-hmm. And then the doctor calls and says, you just don't have one, but two brain aneurysms. And I need you to come into the office so we can begin a plan. We need to work on this. Well, I started feeling negative. I started feeling down, depressed, anxious, worried, concerned about the vision that God has given me because he called me and I thought that that was going to be the end. Mm -hmm. So when I faced that adversity, I thought that it was not going to come into pass. But in the book, I show you some of the steps that I took to bounce back from the dirty share, what I call the dirty share process, bouncing back from the dirty share process. It's a process that I've created to teach my clients, how do you get from feeling dirty and filthy? Mm-hmm. The dirty and the filthy is when you're depressed and anxious and worried and concerned and you're sick and you're in the middle of the storm and you think you're going to die because I yeah. thought I was going to die. But I knew that I needed to make a decision that I was either going to join God in the co-creative process so I could be here and do whatever it, whatever it took for me to be here as a human, or I was just going to give in and die. Yeah. And I I made the decision to be unbreakable. Yeah. And I, I, I absolutely love that. I love, I love that because I feel like we all have moments. It may not be that particular diagnosis, but you know, I know quite a few people recently who've had various diagnoses over different things. And it's like, you need, you, you, you feel like you suddenly need to decide like how yes. I handle this thing. And I love that you're sharing the tools for that process. That's really amazing. So I want to ask you a little bit about your own writing process. I know that you talked in your bio and obviously <laughs> I would have, you know, everyone would have would have heard it by the time they got to this part of the interview you talked about uh, schooling in your second language, right? Um, and now you've written this book uh, and, you know, you've written it in what is your second language. How, so I, I want to ask you more, I, I'm so, I've always been fascinated by language, right? I'm a writer. So <laughs> writers, we think about language all the time. And I'm just curious, um, 
how did you find the process? How did you find that process for you? Are you much more used to having the two languages? Do you still like think in one language and then translate? Like, I'm always so curious about these yes, things. Yes, like, yes, yes. Tell me about, about that process. Yes. So in um in Unbreakable, I share um some stories about um some of the difficulties that I went through um in college specifically. Mm-hmm. I went to school in a full scholarship and um I was struggling with the language. I just have came from DR like four years before that and I was placed in the bilingual program. So I really was not prepared for college when it came to the language. Mm-hmm. Um my fa- my 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 household was completely Spanish. It was not bilingual. It was Spanish. My parents only spoke Spanish. We went to church to a Spanish church. Our friends were Hispanic. Spanish was the main language that we were speaking. Yeah. And um and um, of course, when I went to college, that first semester, it was really difficult. And here is the process of being in bilingual. You know that the brain can only have one main language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No matter. Once you are a, a, a trained in that first language, every other language comes secondary. Um, secondary. It's not your main language. So I'm always going to be Hispanic. And as you can see, I still have a, an accent, right? So in college was very difficult. It has always been very difficult. In fact, I felt some insecurities around my language and having a heavy accent, right? So it, it becomes even heavier if I become aware of it. Now that we're talking about it, now I feel that it gets like deeper and more like like thick, right? Mm. So um, in the beginning, the first, I will say 10 years or so that I was here in the United States, I will dream and only think in Spanish. Mm-hmm. Only in Spanish. All my dreams were in Spanish. Now I can dream some dreams in Spanish and some other dreams can be in English. Mm. Here is the kicker though. Sometimes I'm speaking in Spanish and words in English just come out. Mm. Sometimes I'm speaking in English and I get stuck in a word. If you can see when I stop, it's because I'm looking for the word in my brain. Yeah, It's because I'm thinking in Spanish. Mm-hmm. I want to say in English, but my thought process is in Spanish. So I need to stop myself because I'm looking for that word in English. Mm-hmm. So it's a not a conscious, it's like a subconscious process that happens. So sometimes I'm talking to my clients and a word just come in Spanish or just coming in English. And I have learned to just embrace it yes. because I have found my uniqueness in, in, in being bilingual. If I wasn't bilingual, I wouldn't be the sorry bell that I'm standing before you. I would be sorry bell, but with a different experience, right? Mm-hmm. And this is the experience that God has granted me. So I can share with other women and other people that overcoming those challenges is possible. So to write the book, I used to write three times per week in the morning. I get up early. You saw, I was, te- yeah. I was sending I you back like too. really yeah. early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm an early person. I accomplish a lot during during the morning. So I I would write three times per week. I had a, a, a writing coach, and I have a and I had a um an editor, of mm-hmm. course. This book is a published through an uh at uh, a publisher company that does self publishing, right? Um, so the writing process for me was challenging sometimes, both language and emotional. Mm. Because while I was writing the book and going through my own challenges of writing, I was also dealing with the emotional part of the things that I have gone through in life that were very emotional. Especially, um, for example, when I wrote the chapter about losing my son, Giancarlo, at 36 weeks of gestation, that chapter took me into grief completely. And I had to honor my grief. And the next day, that that, that next day, um, that day and the next day I spent grieving. I canceled all my clients. I needed to rest. I was very emotional drained. uh, drained. It was very difficult. So the language, the the stories is, is all 
part of the of, of my story is part mm -hmm. of who I am so but I do get a lot of support um I got a lot of support because I believe that every queen or every king that is in the process of building a queendom legacy you must have a village of other queens and kings fulfilling mm -hmm. their own purpose within your 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 right. own vision so I don't work alone. I don't do any, I, I, I don't, I, I don't do anything alone. I heal that trauma that we had as black women, that we had, we're strong. We got to do yeah. everything. We have to be alone. We got to do it ourselves because we have something to prove. Well, we have nothing else to prove anymore. We already know that we are amazing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think that I, I, I like, you know, I like what you're saying that because the reality of it is I, First of all, as you said, you black women, you you feel like asking for help is almost this this like sign of of something against you. But also, I think writing itself can sound like this solitary process. Like I always talk about people thinking, "Oh, you're writing a book," and you're like sitting alone in this in this cottage and like you're writing. First of all, first of all, nobody has ever written a book like that. Like it, you know, it's so funny when I think about people talk about like the great and they're talking about white men that's be there and but you don't realize those that guy had a wife that was probably doing all the cooking and the cleaning or whatever the case may be so he wasn't writing alone either first of all but nobody writes alone you can't write a book alone you had your coach you had your editor but then as we talked about earlier you also need your audience right like you cannot you can't successfully write a book and share a story with no one to share it with. So I think you've got to think about all the collaborations that will come yes. um, as a process of writing the book. It could be your editor. It could be a coach. I liked to have other writers around me also writing because I, I don't know if you, how that you, energy, that energy, the energy, energy, you need that energy. Yeah, you need that energy. Yeah. And, and also something that I did that I think it was very brilliant was that, as I was writing, people would get my process. Mm. So I would write and I would go on social media and say, I just wrote chapter one and this is what happened. Mm -hmm. I'm grieving today. This is hard. This is the challenges. This is what came out of it. So throughout the whole writing of the book, which I wrote, I, I wrote this book like in um, six or eight week period, something mm -hmm. like that, like eight week periods or something. But I was very committed, right? I was writing, writing, writing yeah, every, totally. in the morning. Mm -hmm. So every time I will pull my audience, I will share what was going through, what was the process. And if you go to my social media, everything I'm doing around the book, the book launch, everything gets posted. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I, I, I want to post necessarily, but because it's a strategy. I want people to know what my process is. So when I say, now it's time to get this book. Then they know what they're mm -hmm. getting because they already yeah. know the process and the stories and my challenges and how difficult it was when I was talking, writing about Giancarlo's or when I wrote chapter seven about being a single mother and my son's father. I rewrote that chapter because I didn't like it. I was giving that person too much energy in my book. Yeah. And I rewrote that chapter and I took a different uh, per perspective I, I kind of like shift the 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 whole uh, energy of that chapter yeah so you have to pull your audience in with you mm -hmm. and I and love that. Go I love that we will talk a bit about the launch shortly but I want to go back to something you just said about the, the well two things one is that you know I, I I had a guest on season two who talks about, her name's Cara Bolton, and she talks about transmuting pain into joy. And one of the things I liked about that episode was because I think, you know, I have a podcast, a podcast is about joy. I love joy, but I feel like you still have to acknowledge your oh, life, yeah. the things that you have gone through in life. And, and to get to that place of being able, you know, for yourself, being able to give people those tools and so on that will allow them to, take things mm -hmm. to the next level you mm -hmm. still you have to you know you talk about writing the chapter and spending that day with the grief like you have to be able to acknowledge the things that have happened to you and not just bypass them like okay I'm going you know oh, like, you can't ignore it 
you can't ignore it. So I think I love that you mentioned that. But the other thing you mentioned, which I think is so important, you talked about rewriting the chapter about your your son being a single mom. And one of the things that quite often I've had conversations with writers about, you know, how much do you, how much do you write about somebody else in your book? Right. So they're writing a book. Maybe it's personal story that they're including. You know, are there other people involved? Maybe it was not a good experience or whatever. And how much do you write? But as you said, you you to me, I'm like, if you're writing a book on a story, it's about you. It's not really about that. About them. It's about the, the experience and mm. how you got through the experience. Yes. Right. It's about you. So to me, I like I like I just like the phrasing of it. Like, why are you giving that person so much energy? The book is about you, regardless of what that person did or didn't do or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I feel like you you want to frame it. So that it's telling your story. You can't tell anybody else's story, right? And so I like I like that you kind of had think in thinking about that you made that decision because yeah, the book is not why are you, like why are you you're not writing a book about him? You're writing a book about yourself and about your story, but also a book about ways to to get beyond certain things. And it is about if you put the focus on that instead of putting the focus on the other person, I think. Any anytime you tell a story that involves someone else, it will come out in a better way. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, uh, f- to answer the first question uh, that was around, you know, recognizing where we are, uh, the bounce back, um, the bounce back from the dirty share process, that is one of the steps. We always want to self-evaluate and self-analyze. And in the book, I that's what I do. I, after every chapter, you guys get um, um, the takeaways and also you get um, self-evaluation prompts. And mm-hmm. I, uh, so you can self-analyze based on the story, then I then I turn it into to you. So you can do the work as well based on your own story. Mm-hmm. So um, the first step is always self-analyzing. Because we need to know where we at and how we got there. Absolutely. You can never um, shift, transform, and really live in a, in a in pure happiness and joy and being centered if you are ignoring the emotions, the feelings, how you got there, all of these things. Okay. So you do need to uh, self-evaluate. And once you self-evaluate and you know where you at, I always invite people to be the gentle observer of their feelings. When you become the gentle observer, it's you observing your feelings, you recognizing them, you're not suppressing them because when we suppress, we become depressed. We do not suppress. We look at it. We acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. And why you have to be gen- the gentle observer is because we. I don't want you to judge yourself for having the feelings. <laughs> I want you to just say, okay, I lost my son and I'm writing this book. And I'm sure I'm teaching you something, but I am grieving. I am angry. I am sad. And for me, that process required rest. My body needed to rest because it was so emotionally charged, right? So being the gentle observers uh, 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 allows you to take an opportunity to do what? Acknowledge your thought process. What is it that I'm thinking? How did I get here? Where am I at standing right now? What are these feelings? How did this feeling come about? Not to judge yourself, not to criticize yourself, not to um, not to do anything else, but become the observer. So then you can decide that you're going to shift the story, that you're going to rewrite the story, that you're going to change your mindset, you're going to change the way you're thinking, your beliefs, your ideas, your values that are making you feel what you're feeling. So we have to be very good at acknowledging where we are. Because grief, loss, difficulties, being in the storm requires you to do that process. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. And I think I think it's unrealistic to expect that you're just gonna as you talk about bouncing back. And I think sometimes people picture it's almost like this immediate thing like ping, I'm back. When it's like, okay, but you 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 may you it's may a process. spend a couple of days at that and it's gonna be a process. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I totally for me the bouncing back represents if you're learning how to do this process 
and before you you started practicing this and, and, and implementing it, it took you a week to get off the dirty chair. And now you start doing the work. Mm-hmm. And then now it takes you a day and then maybe a few hours and maybe just take a few minutes because you have learned how to bounce back. For example, yeah. I'm speaking about it right now. I'm not grieving. Exactly. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sitting in the chair, right? But if I get in the chair right in this moment, I'm able to emotionally bounce back quickly so I can keep myself together, mm-hmm. right? So it's not about just, oh, you learn this and you're going to bounce back like a ball and you're done. It's you learning the process. So then you are not sitting on the chair for years, for months, for weeks, for eternities, mm-hmm. just sitting there being depressed, anxious, worried, concerned, um, not happy, un- unfulfilled, not fulfilling your purpose. So mm-hmm. it, it is, that's why I call it the bounce back from the dirty share process because it is a process. Process. And and let's talk a little bit about the launch because one of the things that you just said there, I think this is something that I realized when too when I was launching my book is that people are going to ask you questions about your book, right? And if you wrote about something difficult like you did, you, you, you're going to be talking about it, maybe, maybe oh, podcast, maybe you're going to be talking about it, you know, in the, you talked about being in the media, whatever, whatever. So I love that you have a process for that because I think you're not, you know, as a writer, you think, okay, I've written it, I've processed it. Um, okay, it's good now, but like, you're going to, you're going to have to be constantly, not constantly, but there's a possibility of that story coming up, oh, yeah. in, you know, yeah. during your marketing, during your, your sort of, um, promoting the book, right? So you have to be pre- mentally be prepared for that. And I think sometimes as writers, we don't think about the launch process that it, it, it is, it, to me, it's almost similar to the writing process in the sense that you're telling those stories again. And this time you're telling them maybe in a format. I know you're a speaker, so it's okay. <laughs> you're fine with the speaking part. But I know a lot of writers who, including myself, who are not speakers, right? And so now you're not only telling this story, but you're telling it in a format that you're not, maybe not comfortable with. I'm so comfortable on the page, all right? I always tell people like, I I write better than I speak in the sense that I almost feel more me when I'm writing than when I'm speaking. And so I think a lot of authors, it's scary to, to be talking, to be feeling like they're the center when, you know, (laughs) you're so used to, Sitting in the house by yourself, hiding, yeah, so, hiding, yeah. yeah. Talk a bit, yeah. talk a bit about about any um, advice or anything that you have experienced, or any advice that you may have for writers around that, and then we'll talk a bit more about the launch. I think one of the things that, especially as a black woman, that we have to realize is that we no longer have to hide. We don't have to hide from all. Our ancestors did the work for us. We're still dealing with some things, but we are further than when we were we were so there is no hiding this is your story this is my story and you need to tell the story because can nobody tell the story the way you tell the story and here's the thing if you don't tell the story the way you were meant to tell the story you will die with the music inside of you and you will never play the songs that you were meant to play agreed and i and think you know potential is a waste I agree. And I think that that's an important point. I have a friend who um, she wrote a devotional a couple of years ago. She was on season two, Sharice. Go have a listen to Sharice's episode. Um, And she had worked with a company. We talked a bit about a company that she worked with, a publishing company. And she was talking about, you know, who does the marketing. But I think, no, even if a you're working with a company who is going to be doing the marketing. You, the, the, that is your work. It is your book. They're your stories. And even if the company is helping you by giving you opportunities, you, you will still be the person out there telling the story. So I think a part of it, you know, I, one of the things I did around the time when I was launching my book was I actually did, did this course, public speaking course. And a part of the reason I did it was because I realized that I'm just not comfortable. I, I, I was just, <laughs> years Yeah, ago. it's recognizing, like doing the swap analysis, right? Yeah. It's recognizing <laughs> what are my strengths, what are my limitations, for example. I know that yes. um, speaking, it, I love speaking, actually. is I think that's where my thing is. However, um we always want to improve or 
craft, right? Mm-hmm. So I have I have a speaking coach right now. I have my writing coach. I have business coach, right? So um, recognizing right where we are and what are the things that we need to improve. Mm-hmm. Here is my thing. I don't wait for nobody. I wait for no one. This is my story. This is my purpose. This is my vision. This is my mission. Even if I hire other people to do certain things, I am on top of my stuff. Agree. All at the time. Because can nobody tell your story the way that you can tell your story? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we the process, it, it, you have to get organized. You need to have a marketing plan in place. You have to have people that are going to support you in that um, in that process. I have um, people working uh, with me. Like I have my uh, marketing person, my assistant, they all helping me because I still see clients during the day, right? And a lot of people sometimes they see so much and they think that I'm it's me all the time. Well, no, I have a team that's working with me and they help me post. And sometimes I post my own inspiration, but they're doing the part, I'm doing my part. Don't wait for nobody. You need to take charge of your own of your own life in your own process. Mm-hmm. And having a um a launch a process. We have a I have a launch um process like um uh, marketing in 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 media and reaching out to media and press releases and um all these things and then I have an event a coordinator she's going to be the one that's going to be you know coordinating making the the place beautiful and organizing making sure that everybody's going to be good because this is not a grandma kind of book launch this is a party yeah, a party, music, inspiration. I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna teach. We're gonna sign books. We're gonna do all the things. So you need to have a plan in place. Agreed. You need to have your goals and in your objectives. What is it that you're trying to get out of it? For me, the book launch is not just I'm getting the story out, but also uh, all the proceeds of this book go everything that I do with unbreakable goes to JC Precious Mind Foundation is the foundation, my nonprofit that I created in in honor of the baby that I lost at 36 weeks of gestation. Mm -hmm. So what this foundation does is goes back to the Dominican Republic, to my roots, to my people, and we help single moms who have children with special needs and we provide finances. All that this kids needs to thrive, we provide. Food, housing, education, therapy, testing, um, special foods because they have sensory issues. Whatever they need, we are providing for them to thrive. So everything that I do with Unbreakable goes to uh, the, uh, the nonprofit. So that's my goal. Okay. Mm-hmm. So my objective is to also, you know, put my 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 story out there, talk about it. But I also want people to come conscious about there's other people that also need. I'm a phila- philanthropist. I want to help others. I want to extend all the greatness that God has provided to me. I want to extend it to others. Mm-hmm. So you need to be clear on your goal and your objective, right? You need to have a clear plan in place. And then you have to have the key players who are going to help you fulfill that plan. Mm-hmm. And then you create a step-by-step process, yeah. right? Where everybody's doing what they're doing. And so that way it can get fulfilled beautifully. I love that. I love that so much. Um, we're going to wrap it up soon, but I know you are working on another book. I have two questions to ask. Um, the first one is, this is your second book that you're working on now. I know you're still <laughs> still launching the first one, so you may have different answers to this question in the, you know, a few months time, but do you, is there anything you do differently on the second time around? You know, you learn so many lessons when you do that first book. So what are you bringing into the second book process? What do you, what would you, might you do differently or what lessons have you learned? So the first thing that I uh, did was uh, I decided that I was not going to do self-publish. Okay. With uh, it's called the million dollar private practice book to teach um, mental health and healthcare providers how to generate over a million dollars in the practice, right? That's mm-hmm. what the book is all about. So I decided that I was not going to do self-publish that I want a publisher. I want to have that experience. So immediately after I finished Unbreakable, I did the outline and I, I created a proposal. And I sent the proposal out and my book was picked by a traditional publisher. 
Nice. Oh, congrats. Oh. Thank you. I, I need to have you back on the next season. <laughs> you but, better be, be back. Absolutely. Listen, I, that's one thing I will say about this podcast. I honestly feel like I want to bring every single guest back because I've, I've had the bring best. Bring me back. Uh, so absolutely. I'll definitely keep in touch on that one. Anyhow, yeah. Karen, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. So I made that decision. Um, um, Unbreakable comes with a journal, a full, beautiful, colorful journal. It's amazing so people can do the work because this is not about just stories this is about you transforming your life and becoming unbreakable in your life and in your business Mm -hmm. and um so uh the million dollar private practice is going to be published by the uh by the publisher and then i can tell you when you bring me back how the process went yes oh absolutely in terms of having a traditional publisher actually that book is going to get published worldwide it's not just going to be in the united states it's going to be worldwide and we're hoping that it gets translated into other countries that Mm -hmm. are hoping to that that's the goal and that book comes with a workbook it's gonna i'm going to publish a workbook and i'm going to publish the million dollar planner mm, for healthcare professionals in private practice. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's all happening. I love that. I love that. So oh, like- something different that I'm doing this time, I'm sorry, okay. is that when I wrote Unbreakable, I wrote the book first and then I did the journal. This time around, I'm writing the book and i'm doing the 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 workbook at the same time mm, i love that yes. I love save me that. some time exactly and i think sometimes it works that way um i have a client and similarly she's working on a book and it's going to come with a journal and it, we're just going to pull it together at the same time because as she's writing she has the the prompts you know you talked about the prompts you may have some writing prompts you may have some exercises for people to do and I feel like as you know as you're writing it you can actually pull those out right and you can have those in a separate document and so that you're actually working on those things at the same time because I feel like sometimes as you're writing you may have an idea for the workbook and vice versa right so it's nice to kind of bring that process together so I think that's great oh and something different that I'm doing for the next book is that I'm not giving people the so the the analysis prompts they're gonna go in the workbook. Okay, so every so everything's going into the workbook. You're not gonna have it in the actual book itself. Well, they're gonna have the takeaways of the book, mm-hmm. but the self analysis they're gonna go into the workbook. I'm gonna okay. that's something different that I'm doing. Perfect. Uh, and my other question I had because obviously Unbreakable is going to be very inspirational it's going to be a real like a book for transformation for a personal's personal life sorry for a person's personal life which obviously that's going to extend out into your your family your business or whatever the case may be but i know that it sounds like the next couple of books are going to be more business oriented books so i'm curious how how does this compare to the personal types of stories that you wrote in Unbreakable? Do you feel? Do you, and obviously, you may you're still going to do some storytelling in the business book because you you know you still have to to give examples and stuff like that. But like how how does how do the styles of writing compare the storytelling of Unbreakable versus the million dollar private practice? So, what I did for you guys because I love you all so much. Um, there's a chapter, chapter 10 in uh, Unbreakable, mm-hmm. where I uh, highlight the eight pillars of business success. Ooh. Yes, I give it to you, baby. So you get the eight pillars of business success is chapter 10. So this book is not just personal. It's also about you diving into business and career. Mm -hmm. Um, It talks about the mindset, talks about writing a business plan, how your business structure, what do you need, business model, business Mm -hmm. marketing, um, business finances, systems and support. So I gave you a chapter because it was important for me because in the book, I talk about how I went into business, uh, mm-hmm. how I went into becoming a success, successful in business. And then I wanted to give you what I did to become a million dollar practice in a short okay. period of time. Within within that book. Uh, within but, this book. Yes. And yeah, that, and that is, that is perfect. 
I, I was more thinking in terms of the writing, like how are you finding the writing of the second one different to the first one though as well? Or is it yeah. different? Yeah, it is different because although I'm going to be storytelling, like you said, I'm going to be mm -hmm. giving uh, you guys a sample of how I came to apply that into business. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more what to do. Right. It's okay. more what to do, how to do, what to implement, what to do. It's, um, it's, it's still going to have some level of inspiration, but it's going to have more, more you having to do the inspirational action, doing the doing, the this mm. is the steps that you need to take to do a business plan. This is the step that you need to take to do. So it's a more to do kind of a book. Yeah. And I like that because I think sometimes it, it, I love that you have that, that chapter about successful businesses within Unbreakable. But um, I think it's also great sometimes to just have some very clear steps right like yes. very make it very actionable and i i feel like there's some you know some books are really good at being very actionable so i love that you've got that sort of coming down the pipeline so like i said keep me posted i'm ready for that already so keep me posted and on that something one. else that i do want to give you really quick is like just like in chapter 10 i gave you like my next book in mm. in on the business book i'm going to give you my next book there's going to be a chapter on about the next book and that's nice. how I'm going to write the outline and do another proposal if I decide yes. to make tradition or not. I love that. So, so you writers that already know you have multiple books in the pipeline, this is what you need to do. You need to start talking about the next book in book one, and you'll get people already on the journey ready for the next book. Um, I really appreciate uh, your time meeting with you. My last question is more of a fun question. What do you, I mean, you write obviously range right you have your range what do you like to read what do you like to watch what what what's your input <laughs> i have a library of books i love personal development i have books on personal development business marketing all the kind of books mm -hmm. i don't watch tv um i like traveling i love spending time with my family i love going to the spa mm -hmm. i love pampering myself i love um sleeping my night um, I do sleep my eight hours. <laughs> Sounds good to me. With my, I do not play with my self care. Um, so I read a lot. Um, I love reading. The, if, when you come here, there's books. I think um, I need like a shelf, like I need a built in shelf, right? So I can put all my books, especially my books, right? Oh, sorry, so, so, shelf for sorry, Bell's books, of course, of oh, course. Yeah. Yeah. So I read about self-development, personal development, parenting, a marketing business, um, business, uh, uh, you know, business plans. I I do a lot of self-development. I have coaches. I'm very supportive. I have a speaking coach. Um, I have a business coach. I yeah. have a writing coach. I have all kinds of coaches and support around me. Um, I love traveling. I love going to the Caribbean. I love the ocean. I love being there. Um, when I was younger, I, I was crazy about going down dancing. I don't go to clubs anymore. Like that's 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 when I was like younger, but I love dancing. So mm -hmm. I don't watch TV, I don't find a value in it. Um, so I listen to um, you know, personal development stuff when I want to, and I like to take my bath and just pamper it myself. I love that. I love that. And and the last thing I will say is, you see, um, there's a guy that I, I used to listen to his podcast. I still do from time to time, but he's changed over the years. And one of the things he always talks about is like, um, you know, if, if something's important to you, like, what are you reading? What are you reading about? And so, you know, you talk about you, you're, you're a successful business, you're, you're a successful speaker, whatever, but all, a lot of your inputs are feeding that, right? It doesn't make any oh, sense. Yeah. You want to be successful, um, business person, you know, you got, you read books about the marketing, you read books about the business. You got to like, consume the stuff. Yes. You have to be to learn. Everything. Yes. Yeah. So I love that you're, you're always learning about those things. Oh yes, awesome. I really appreciate you. I thank you. Looking forward They're to unbreakable. Oh, I'm all right. Listen, I want I want a physical copy, and we didn't even get to talk about the design, but the that color is it's a, the color you have your hair, the color you have on the cover of your book, like that color is just 
talking to me okay so we didn't even get to talk about that but right? definitely have to have you back for sure uh i really appreciate you joining me today i wish you all the best with the continuing the launch um, and any anybody who's listening to this you want uh, some inspiration and some also real actionable steps that you can take to take your life to the next level you need to get sorry about book period right. oh, the end <laughs> all right thank you so much for joining me sorry about really appreciate you and uh i'll see you <laughs> i'll see you in another season when we <laughs> see you soon <laughs> bye-bye i'll see you soon thanks bye-bye thank you for joining us today you can find out more about our guests in the notes below and don't forget to hit subscribe to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss new episodes when they drop and if this has inspired you to get your own writing project into the world Click on my website below and learn how you can work with me as a writing coach or an editor. Until next time, I send you big love from a small island.